we've had a quick look at how we can use a for loop to iterate over each element within an array. Now let's have a look at a construct that we can use in Perl that is made specifically for use with lists. This is the for each loop. Now the for each loop is syntactically quite similar to a while loop or a for loop. But instead of using a condition in here or the three parts of a for loop, we simply feed it the name of the list itself. And then, very similarly, we have a set of procedures or statements that form a block to be carried out for each element of the array. Let's move over to our text editor and see how that plays out. Let's set up a simple array here, and this is going to be names of some films. And then we're going to use our for each loop here. We simply give the for each loop the name of our element as its argument. And then we set up whatever we want within the block of statements. Now, in order to access each element of the array, we can't simply say films with the i scalar variable, as we could with the for loop. We're not actually creating an i variable. We're not using a number to iterate through each element. Instead, we're simply asking Perl to look at each element within the list. So the way we access each element is to use a very special variable. And this special variable looks like this. And I'm going to put it on its own line and move the new line down to the next line in this case so that you can see exactly what the special variable looks like. It just looks like a dollar sign with an underscore beneath it. And of course a semicolon just to finish off the line. But what it's doing here is it's standing in for the particular element of the array that we're looking at as we pass through each iteration of the block. So to move over to our command line and see how it works, it simply prints out each element. So although we haven't explicitly told Perl to set the value of this special variable to anything in particular, by using the for each loop, we've implicitly given this special variable a specific value. This is a very useful and handy feature of Perl. Having access to these special variables allows us to write very concise code indeed. For the sake of clarity, you may prefer to use a more ordinary sounding variable name. Let's call it name as a scalar variable. If you want to do that, all you need is to pop it in just after for each but before the name of the array and any brackets, and then you can use whatever variable name you like within that block. However, this is a very concise way to write your code and is perfectly acceptable as a style of writing Perl. So we've looked at the for each loop and the special scalar variable by which we can access each element within an array. But what do we do when we're looking at for each in the context of hashes? Let's say we set up a hash and we're going to call it family ages. And family ages is simply going to be a set of names and their particular ages. So we have our hash set up. When we go, however, to use our for each loop, it's not just a simple matter of accessing each element. Within a hash, each element has two parts, the key and the value. So we have to tell Perl what we're actually looking for when we ask it to use a for each loop to loop over our hash. The way we can do this very simply is to use the keys function to pull out each of the keys 
of the family ages hash. Once we have the keys of the family ages hash, the for each loop will iterate over each of these keys and make them available as our special variable. Let's have a quick look at this in our command line. As you can see, it's shown each of the hashes keys. However, we're not actually getting at the data. This is not family names. This hash is called family ages. So how do we access each of the ages within our hash? What we can do is we can first of all use the special variable on its own to show the name, which is the keys of the hash. And then we can use the the name of the hash in scalar context to show that we want to get only one element and then we can use the key that we've been given. So what actually happens is once this is translated by the for each loop into the special variable meaning each of the names we actually then pass the special variable in as the key to getting one of the values out of our hash. So if we move over to our command line and run our loop again, we're able to, by using the keys function and the for each loop and the special variable, we're able to pull out both the keys and the values from the hash.